cold outside. No, it's not. Really? Sorry, you need one for those that are around me, my name is Phil. I'm going to try to have some fun with you guys tonight. Uh, I had, uh, you guys cheer with the weirdest crap. Holy moly. Um, I had a weird experience a couple days ago. Um, I actually was talking to this girl recently, and things didn't work out for me. Uh, Thank you very um, much. We couldn't really find each other um, any time to hang out, you know what I mean? Busy with schedules. And I was just down in the dump, so I went to talk to my dad, thinking that would help. And uh, go talk to my dad, and I tell him the whole situation. And my dad gives me one of those mindless cliches. You know, Phil, there's always plenty of fish in the sea. And I don't know what happened, but something triggered in me, and I'm like, well, duh, that's where they live. <laughs> Thank you, duh. <laughs> it made me think about all these cliches. Uh, there's plenty of them out there that we like take for granted. We're lazy nowadays. If someone said something creative nowadays, like, there's plenty of honey in the honeycomb, or there's a lot of other trees on the forest, or there's a lot more hookers around the corner, it'd be a little more creative, you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. I've been trying to work on them, but something's just not working for me. Uh, how about fair? You guys uh, like nursery rhymes? Yes. This is the most enthusiastic crowd I've ever had. I'm so happy. Uh, let's move on from that. But I've been trying to get back in the dating game. It's been really hard for me lately. Uh, my last girlfriend really uh, did a number on me. Uh, so I, one of my buddies, I went to him, like, I'm struggling so much with this. I don't know what to do. My buddy's like, you know what? Get all your ambitions out of the way. Get all, just go on Tinder, go to a strip club, get everything out of the way, and you'll feel better. And I'm like, that's a horrible idea. I don't want to do either of those things. If I, Tinder, I don't want to go on Tinder. If I wanted to see the cast members of Orange to New Black, I would go watch the show. All right, I don't need to go look at the website. It's a horrible website. Don't get me wrong, there's some beautiful ladies on the website, but not interested. Strip club, that's even more awkward. I don't want to go to a strip club. You want to know why? Because if I went to a strip club, I guarantee I'd see someone I recognize. Like my boss or my friends or my mom working. It's just something to go on experience. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's just awkward. But I'll admit, I did go to a strip club and it wasn't the best experience I've ever had. I went in. It could be because I just don't know how strip clubs work, or it could be because I went at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, that may be the that main reason. Uh, I went in there, no one was in there but one guy behind the bar and one girl cleaning up the tables. And the girl comes up to me to ask what I'm doing there. And one, when I saw her, I'm like, I really hope this is not a stripper. It was. And when she came up to me, she's like, hey, honey, can I help you with anything? I'm like, uh, First time in the strip club, folks. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, oh, I'm here for stripping. <laughs> it's like, honey, it's 3 p.m. in the afternoon. This isn't McDonald's. We don't have a breakfast menu. You need to come back later, okay? I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. And I start to leave. She pulls me back and I'm like, listen. She goes in her boob wallet and gives me a card. And I'm like, okay, and what's this? She's like, this is a free lap dance. Come back later. I'll give you your free dance. And then we're going to have a fun time, all right? I'm like, okay, well, how will I know who you are? Well, my name's on the card. On the card. Oh, thanks, Mrs. Balcony? Yeah, hon, after they see the view, they never want to leave. So after that, I'm on the process right now to become a priest, and uh, it's going pretty well for me so far. I'm going to go celibate. Um, I don't know, I, I got to give credit to uh, those strippers, though. They're uh, very, very athletic, and I envy that. I've been trying to get back in better shape. I'm, I'm, I don't got much to work with, as you can tell. I'm short, I got a gap in my teeth, I'm shaped like a piece of toast. Uh, not much, I'm one yellow coat of paint away to turn into Spongebob Squarepants. Like, I don't really got much going on here. On a scale of like 1 to 10, I know I'm like a solid 4.7, you know what I mean? And, but I'm okay with that, you know what I mean? So, but I've been trying to get out on the dating game, and it's, it's been rough, I'm not gonna lie. I've been really struggling. Uh, I, I don't know what to do. Like, one of my buddies, uh, I wanted to go see him, and he, uh, he has like the perfect marriage, you know? Who here thinks they have the perfect marriage? Anyone here married? What's that thing? What's that thing? Two people. Okay. Let's move on from that joke. But I went to him and he has like a great relationship with his wife. So I go to him thinking that he's going to help. And I go to him and he's like, all right, man, how can I help? I'm like, what I need you to do is I need you to leave. I need you to get your wife here because I need to ask her questions. Because I don't need a guy helping you with relationships. It's not going to help. That's like finding someone to help you look for food and he's hungrier than you. It's, it's not going to help in any way or form. He's going to want a bite of whatever he can get. And I, I'm not into the sharing mood. So I sit down and I talk to this lady and his wife. And I'm like, all right, Phil, what do you need? Well, well Deb, how did you and your husband need? I'm just looking for any inspiration, you know what I mean? And she's like, well, uh, what and she told me the whole entire story. You know what I mean? And what happened is essentially 
they met in a bar, like everyone does, and this guy started flirting with Deborah. There's a girl, like her name, and started flirting with her. And my my buddy was in the scene and seeing this guy creeping up. Finally, he got the nerve and said, "Yo, leave her alone." One thing led to the other. They ended up going outside, getting a fight. So the point that police get involved. All right. So before the police arrest both of them, he says, I just need to go get my stuff, then you can arrest me, it's fine. He goes back inside and talks to his future wife and says, listen, I was trying to talk to you all night, I didn't have the courage, I'm about to get arrested, so uh, can I get your number? And I'm like, holy crap, that's how you met? He's like, yeah, geez, what was your like first date like? Oh, we won't, both men got tested for HIV. Jesus Christ, are you serious? <laughs> what was your honeymoon, did you rob a bank? Oh no, that was our anniversary. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I took away from that. I'm like, maybe that's it. Maybe I need to get tougher. You know? I mean, maybe I need to like jack up, get all in shape and everything. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do this. So I contact a different buddy of mine who's into boxing. I'm like, all right, this sounds like a great idea. I go call him up, tell him the whole thing, and I go to his house. I walk into his house and I know I'm in the right place. You know what I mean? You walk in, I see protein shakes and like steak supplements and a dead hooker on the couch, and I just know I'm in the right place to learn how to box, you know what I mean? So I'm getting all excited. He goes into his garage and he has a full-size boxing ring in his garage. He has a boxing ring, he has weights, he has that like speed ball testicle thingy in the corner. I'm all excited and I'm getting pumped up and ready. So he's, he gives me that weird diaper thing you put on your head, a mouth guard, and says, get in the ring, let's go. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, we're gonna get right into it. I'm like, whoa, is there like a training wheels version of this? Like, can I go like, watch a video how boxing was invented or something? Like, isn't there a training course? I don't know, breast tax, man, let's get right into it. And it wasn't that bad. We got into it, he started showing me how to move, how to dodge and everything, how to throw a jab. And I'm like, this is not that bad, I can do this, I can do this. My like, energy and motivation is building, I'm getting super excited. We take a 15 minute break, he tells me you're doing good. What's gonna happen now is we're gonna get inside uh, and we're, I'm gonna go faster. And I'm like, okay, I can do that. Uh, my motivation's building, I'm all happy. So he starts going faster. All right, gotcha. All right, this is good. That's all. Oh, that yeah, that one almost hit me. Like, those are, oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> so I fall on the ground. About four hours later, he was convincing me my name was not Nancy. And uh, I, I, he looked at me and he's like, Are you sure this is for you? And I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, my head hurts really bad. And he's like, Maybe you should try a different version of this. You can still be athletic. I'm like, why don't you try martial arts? Try martial arts. Maybe you can do that. I have a buddy. So I'm like, I was all excited about the eye of the tiger, you know what I mean? But I was already right changing things. So I ended up going to this other guy, I call him up, he gives me all the information, and I go meet him at his dojo, which I think is very like nice to say when it's in between a hoopla and a tattoo parlor. But I'm not one to judge. So I get there a little bit early, the guy comes up to me, and I'm like, uh, Mr. Goldstein? And he's like, oh, that's Sensei Goldstein. Sure. I'll find whatever. And he says, well, the class hasn't started yet. Please go inside, change, and we'll be starting in about a half hour. Like, okay, go inside, I get changed into that, essentially a robe with sweatpants, and I get all excited and ready, and I start noticing kids walking in. All right? And I'm like, okay, sure. I can, I can handle this. And uh, I was thinking, like, maybe they're in a different class or something like that. And then finally, Mr. Goldstein, sensei, gets in the middle of the line and says, everyone line up. I'm still sitting. Watch all these kids run up, get all excited, and they all bow to him. And I'm sitting there, and sensei says, Philip? Huh? Oh, no. Everyone starts at the same level. Me, I don't know, maybe someone just freaked out with me. I'm like, no, nope, can't do this. Sorry, I can't. Nope, not my thing. So I leave, immediately go change, get back in my normal clothes, come back out, and he's standing right at the door waiting for me to get out of the bathroom. I'm like, uh, what do you want? He's like, you have to join us. This is how everyone starts. Everyone starts. I'm like, I can't do this. Like, if one of these kids punches, it's not going to be in a good area for me. I can't do this. It's not working for me in any way or form. So he's like, all right, listen, hit me. I'm like, what? Seriously, punch me. Uh, I guarantee everything will be fine. I'm, like, I'm not gonna hit you, seriously. I, if you throw a punch, I'll show you what I can teach you, and then you'll stay in the class. I'm like, I'm not gonna hit you. I'm like, what, you don't think you, you can hit me? I'm like, I don't know what happened. Maybe I just got cocky, maybe it was just anger, but I threw a punch. About four hours later, so I was telling him his name wasn't Nancy, and uh, it was going pretty uh, bad. Uh, he's doing my taxes now, though. That, that's helping a lot. Uh, this isn't working at all for me tonight, is it? Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, any ramen noodle fans here? 
Woo! Ah, the cheer of poor people. Outstanding. Uh, I love ramen noodles. Um, uh, I loved ramen noodles as a little kid, and I think it was because my, uh, I always would come home late at night eating ramen noodles. And my parents always thought I was like some crazy big stoner. I was, but that's not the point. Um, I love having ramen when I got home from friends because it was something simple. Because I'm American, I cook it right in the packet, in the pot, and I used to love it so much. But my dad had like the sixth sense of smell. Like, he'd be up in a stir and my mom said he'd wake up like a monster. <laughs> Beef flavor. He added hot sauce. Phil, we're trying to sleep up here. I don't know. I, I love uh, any, uh, I love hot sauce. Anyone likes everyone like hot sauce? How about sriracha sauce? Any sriracha sauce fans? Uh, I love sriracha. If you don't know, sriracha comes in this very iconic bottle with a uh, red, green cap, and the rooster on the front. And uh, I don't know something about sriracha that I don't like. It's the name. I, sriracha doesn't sound Thai, because it's a Thai sauce. It doesn't sound Thai to me. It sounds like Hispanic, Latin. Like, honestly, it sounds like a gang of Latin queens. We have the sriracha. It's much spicy. Uh, at least in that case, I explain why there's a cock in the bottle. <laughs> Not because they're gay, because Latinos love cockfights, you horrible racists. Yeah, that's why. Speaking of racism, uh, Donald Trump's in office. Um, uh, I, uh, I love politics. When I got into comedy, I really wanted to do politics. Um, but I realized uh, the nation is so one-sided, you can't make everyone happy. So I don't try to talk about it ever. The problem is, nowadays, it's everywhere. On Facebook, it's on Twitter, it's on everything. Raise your hand if you saw a comment about anything with politics just today. You're all lying if you're not raising your hand right now. At one point or another, someone said something. but. There's one thing I will say uh, that I heard today that made a lot of sense. Does everyone remember Bush Sr.? Mm -hmm. If you don't know, he was our president at one point. Uh, he, uh, he had this thing where he banned broccoli from the White House. Imagine that. You, he, he's the president of the United States. White House says broccoli is no longer allowed inside this house. Never again. And I think that's really cool. As a, like, as a really small power, you get to kind of have something like that. So I'm imagining Mexican food is not going to be allowed anymore in the current White House. Um, <laughs> a few people laugh at that. I'll try it. Um, I don't know. Before I leave, I'll tell you a story. Um, uh, has anyone had their parents ruin their dreams? <laughs> wow. This, this crowd is just fantastic. I'm, please don't come to my comic open tonight if you be this. Please the answer. Jesus Christ. But um, my dad uh, kind of ruined my dreams when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I wanted to be a WCW professional wrestler. Does anyone remember wrestling? Uh, very simple. I loved wrestling when I was a kid. And I was watching this one episode, and I don't know why this has stuck with me, but I was watching this episode, and they were having a tag team match. And one dude said to the other, it was like, well, man, I'm going to be his tag team partner. Do you have a problem with that? When I was a kid, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And I'm like, I'm going to say that the very next time I can. And I did, the next day, to my dad. <laughs> and it didn't work out for me. Uh, I lived in Utica all my life. Uh, me and my dad one day went up to Syracuse Mall. I don't remember exactly what we were doing. I know we were shopping. I think we were buying, I don't know. I think it was ramen. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But while we, was, we were out there having a great time, and we were about to check out, and I looked at a magazine. I don't remember what was on the magazine. It doesn't really matter. But my dad's in a great mood. He's like, you know what? My son's having a good time. Maybe I'm going to get that magazine he's looking at. Maybe he wants it. And he's like, hey, bud, what are you looking at, man? And in my mind, twisted and evil, I was like, here's my chance. I'm looking at a magazine, Dad. Do you got a problem with that? And as I said it, I literally saw it slip out of your mouth, my mouth, like Alice in Wonderland. I'm like, no, don't come back. And it went into my dad's face. My dad went from happy joy to loving his son to I'm going to murder him. And it was one of the most terrifying moments of my life. But my dad took it like a champ. He really did. He was really excited about it. He simply paid for everything, and we got in the car, and we drove all the way home. My dad didn't say a word to me the whole entire ride home from Syracuse. That's 45 minutes. You know you're in trouble. 40 without traffic. You know what I mean? It's, it was a very bad ride. So we got in the driveway, and my dad says, where'd you learn that? 
And I freaked out, because during this time when I was a kid, violence was huge then. You weren't allowed to allow your kids to watch anything that had to do with violence. It didn't matter if it was Power Rangers, Transformers, Barney, it doesn't matter. You weren't allowed to watch any of that stuff when you were a kid. So, uh, but I didn't want to get in trouble, so I'm like, I learned it from wrestling. I'm like, you know, you're not supposed to do that, right? Mm -mm. Never gonna do it again? Hell no. I didn't actually say that. And he's like, all right, we're good. In my mind, that's it? Dad, I still watch wrestling? Yeah, totally fine. Oh, thanks, Dad. Well, no problem, bud. Oh, yeah, bud. Yeah, what's up, Dad? Wrestling's fake. <laughs> Do you have a problem with that? <laughs> Woo! All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Phil Cantarelli. I want to say thank you for listening to me. Um, I haven't been on stage in almost three weeks, so it's a little bit rusty. But we do have a comic open mic here December 10th. We have a comic open mic every second Saturday, every single month here at Utica Brews. So if you are interested in some better comics than myself, please come on down. We get people all the way from Syracuse, Rochester, um, Rochester. We get them all over the place coming down. So please come on down. What's that, Ian? And Rems everyone give a cheer for Ian, because Ian's going to be performing. There you go. Last time he was on stage, I cracked an egg on his head. I remember. Yeah, so that's what kind of comedy you're looking forward to. But once again, thank you for listening. My name is Phil Cannarelli. Right. Let's give it for Phil.